This is Neil Neri again, once again with EAS. We're gonna start part three, adding a PID for controlling the VFD. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna right click on this PID since I've already got it created. I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna call it VFD. Now remember in the earlier episode or video, we had this as direct acting. So what we want to do is we want to change the pit action to reverse acting. Since we've already got our limit block over here, I'm just going to duplicate it. Since it's all ready to go. And then as I said earlier, you can go in here and we can make these, the high limit and low limit, um, always where it, it goes to a network set point and that way you can do some programming later on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this chill water valve, we're gonna duplicate it. We're gonna call this VFD signal. I'm trying to keep it complicated. Now for this drive, the drives of uh, ABB, we're gonna go in here and it's a zero to 10. Output. We're gonna take this right here, our fan status, and utilize that as um, as our disable because we have a minimum set point in the VFD. So that way, as soon as the VFD sees the enable, the fan's gonna come up and automatically ramp to uh, fifteen percent. So then we're gonna duplicate this here. We'll call this VFD. And then once you build these programs, you can take them and you can save them uh, to your computer. And that way you've already got the programs built. And then all you gotta do is just modify it as you need per, per building or per piece of equipment. So like I was saying early, uh, in the earlier video, for the throttle and range, We'll change that to 1.2 to start off since the VFD, the, um, the transducer is going to be a little bit tighter um, on, the, on the span. And then we like to make this 200 to start off. And there's, you could do 8 to 300 or, you know, just, it all depends on what it, what you, um, when you start commissioning to see where everything is reading. So the next thing is, is we need a set point. So I'm just gonna duplicate this one so that I don't have to worry about dragging it. We're gonna call it static set point. I'm sorry that it shakes. I kind of hit the stand every now and then. So I'm gonna come here. I'm going to right click, configure the properties. We're going to turn this into pressure. Inches of water. And this building is designed for 1.2. So I'm going to drop this down a little bit. So now we're going to need, I'm going to duplicate. And we're gonna bring in, here, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna come over here and start over. So we need a modulating input for our static pressure transducer. So we're gonna call this static. Or you can call it static pressure, however you wanna label it. Like I said, just keep your naming consistent um, so that way you don't have issues later on down the road. So we're gonna right click, configure properties. So now we're gonna do what's called custom voltage. We're gonna go back and make this pressure. Inches of water. Now this one is a, is a zero to 10 input voltage 
and then our input is zero for the low, and then our high is gonna be five inches of water. Click OK. Now our transducer's been built. We're gonna bring this in the sensor. I'm sorry, I'm very kinda of anal when it comes to my wire sheets. So here's our, here's our program for controlling a VFD PID. We'll, there's different ways to do to disable. Like I said, it just depends on what you got in the building. Um, this is a retrofit. So right now there is no actual fan status, but we are gonna be, um, I created the point. And then what we're gonna do is, is we're actually gonna install a CT um, for that purpose. And then we're also gonna pull in the uh, run wires to pull in the VFDs via back net. Um, so stay tuned, we're gonna work on some more stuff. I appreciate the time.